Today we take up the subject of wielding the sword of Almighty God in the name Archangel Michael. This is a joyous lecture because we deliver to each heart and we speak to the hearts of the whole world. God has provided a defense from evil and has made plain the way of the divine goodness that is surely the foundation of every living soul. So I begin with the Apostle Paul, who exhorts the Christian community at Ephesus to put on the whole armor of God, the whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, your mighty I am presence, and in the power of his might, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, in other words, fallen angels, reprobate angels. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is your right use of the laws of God. And we meditate upon his laws day and night, as the psalmist wrote and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Holy Spirit, which is the word of God. Therefore, Paul reveals to us the teaching that the sword of the Spirit is in fact the word of God. The word sword is a code word for sacred word or the Spirit's word, the Spirit's word. And so the S stands for sacred or spirit. The understanding of the sword as the sacred word of God is illustrated in a Jewish tradition about Mount Horeb. Horeb is the mountain where God revealed himself to Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments. The Hebrew word for Horeb is closely related to the word for sword or knife. One Jewish text says that Mount Horeb is called by that name because there the sword of the law was drawn upon the sinners. According to Arabic tradition, the Hebrews invented the sword. The word sword can also refer to spoken word. This is reflected in the ancient Pythagorean maxim, do not stir the fire with a sword. Iamblichus, in his life of Pythagoras, says this maxim warns us to be prudent. He says it shows the propriety of not speaking sharp words to a man full of fire and wrath, not contending with him. For frequently, by uncivil words, you will agitate and disturb an ignorant man, and you will suffer yourself." End of quote. Thus we see that the word sword can also mean sharp word. One interesting Hebrew tradition involves the sword of Methuselah. Methuselah, as you know, was one of the sons of Enoch. A text called The Ten Generations relates this story. After the translation of Enoch, Methuselah was proclaimed ruler of the earth by all the kings. He walked in the footsteps of his father, teaching truth, knowledge, and fear of God to the children of men all his life, and, de and deviating from the path of rectitude neither to the right nor to the left. He delivered the world from thousands of demons that were the posterity of Adam, which he had begotten with Lilith, that she-devil of she-devils. These demons and evil spirits, as often as they encountered a man, had sought to injure and even slay him, until Methuselah appeared and supplicated the mercy of God. 
He spent three days in fasting, and then God gave him permission to write the ineffable name upon his sword, wherewith he slew 94 myriads of the demons in a minute, until Agrimus, the firstborn of them, came to him and entreated him to desist, at the same time handing the names of the demons and imps over to him. And so Methuselah placed their kings in iron fetters, while the remainder fled away and hid themselves in the innermost chambers and recesses of the ocean. And it is on account of the wonderful sword by means of which the demons were killed that he was called Methuselah. End of quote from the Ten Generations. You can take this as myth, you can take it as allegory, or you can take it as fact. One of the words that is the root of the name Methuselah means sword, or he sent. Methuselah's sword appears again in Jewish lore. Tradition says that thousands of years later, Abraham used the sword of Methuselah in his conquest of the kings in about 2100 BC. These kings had invaded the Jordan Valley where Abraham's nephew Lot had settled. Abraham routed the kings and rescued Lot and others who had been taken captive. Genesis tells us that on that occasion, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God, El Elyon. And he blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And Abraham gave him tithes of all. I love this passage when Melchizedek, king of Salem and priest of the Most High God, enters the scene, enters the great initiate of the mystery schools going back to ancient Atlantis and Lemuria. And what does he come as? He comes as a type of Christ, a type of Christ. He comes as a forerunner. In the book of Hebrews, we read that Jesus was also a priest after the order of Melchizedek. No one has been able to quite determine who wrote the book, the book of Hebrews. My vote is that Jesus himself wrote it or dictated it to one of his apostles following his resurrection. Because who else would have known that Jesus was a priest after the order of Melchizedek but Jesus. In any case, in the first book of the Bible, going all the way back to those who still remembered Atlantis, still remembered the flood of Noah and the sinking of Atlantis, Melchizedek serves Holy Communion and Abraham tithes. How deep are our roots in the Judeo-Christian background that is ours. Of course, we know that beloved El Moria, whom we know as St. Thomas More, was embodied as Abraham. Legends about swords abound in the world's folklore. Perhaps the most famous of all swords is King Arthur's Excalibur. El Moria was also embodied as King Arthur in the 5th century AD. King Arthur had two swords, the first he pulled from a stone to prove he was divinely ordained king of England, and the second he received from the Lady of the Lake. In some texts, both of Arthur's swords are named Excalibur. In others, only the sword from the Lady of the Lake is called Excalibur. Arthur uses the sword he pulls from the stone to fight six kings who challenge his right to be king. When Arthur unsheathes his sword at the crucial moment in the battle, it shines in the eyes of his enemies like the light of 30 torches. Later, this sword breaks during Arthur's duel with King Pellinore. Merlin allays Arthur's concern that he has no sword and leads him to a lake. In the midst of the lake is an arm coming up out of the water, clothed in white silk fabric, holding the sword Excalibur. A damsel, the lady of the lake, comes to Arthur and tells him he can take the sword. The sword is the symbol of the raised kundalini. 
In Hinduism, the Kundalini is the spiritual power that is coiled like a sleeping serpent at the base of the spinal column. Kundalini is a Sanskrit word meaning snake. The Kundalini is called the serpent power and is personified as the goddess Kundalini, hence one of the aspects of the Divine Mother. This dormant spiritual energy can be awakened in a number of ways, including yogic exercises, spiritual disciplines, but above all, intense love for God. When you resolve the schisms in your psyche, in your psychology, that have to do with differences with the mother, the divine mother, the human mother, human mothers going back many lifetimes, when you resolve those differences and you can truly embrace the Divine Mother, then there is no barrier to this Divine Mother rising in the temple of your being and strengthening you and strengthening your chakras. This is why beloved Kathumi, the Blessed Mother Mary, and others have counseled us in these days and years to work assiduously on our psychology so that we can resolve any burden that we have with any part of life with God himself, if necessary. Only then can we truly achieve the divine union in this life. When awakened, the kundalini rises up the spinal column. It passes through the seven spiritual centers along the spine. The centers, as you know, are called chakras and described as lotus blossoms. As the kundalini ascends, it activates the chakras one by one. When the chakras are balanced, then they begin to spin like a wheel, and they open their petals. When the kundalini reaches the fontanelle at the top of the head, it stimulates the crown chakra. And then the devotee experiences enlightenment and bliss. This process sometimes takes lifetimes, for the very reason I just stated. People carry their psychology and their karma with them, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. If you would like to get a real understanding of how karma cycles back, you should read the book by Phylos, the Tibetan, a dweller on two planets. He traces his embodiments on Lemuria and Atlantis, and then in the 19th century in California. He shows how he makes karma and how he finally balances karma and how difficult and painful the initiations were. What we see then is that his psychology that goes back to Atlantis is still with him in this century, 10 to 12,000 years later. Nothing changes in the experience called death. That's why it says in the scriptures, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. If you are filthy before death, you will not awaken an angel of light. You will be filthy after the moment of the passing of the physical body. And so we come with our baggage, and in this lifetime, we share one thing in common. We're tired of carrying the baggage of our negative karma. We've decided that we cannot solve our problems ourselves, that the human dilemma cannot be resolved by human solutions, Therefore, we have looked to the saints and sages of all ages, and we have said, I would apprentice myself to this teacher, to that teacher. I would walk in his footsteps. I would learn from him. I would meditate upon my God. I would invoke the violet flame to balance my karma. In this lifetime, I want to make my life count for the putting into the sacred fire of all of that baggage of my human karma, my human psychology, the records of pain and grief and all that goes along with this human existence. This I will do so that I will finally be free of the encumbrances in my own being so that I can give my heart and soul in serving humanity and serving to set life free. That's why we're all here today, isn't that right? That's the reason. God knows and we know, the fallen angels also know, that when the power and the wisdom and the love of God is restored to the individual, then that individual 
merged in the heart of Christ and his blessed mother, one with the Buddha, one with the I am that I am, can be a major force in his family, in his community, in his nation, a force for good and a force for turning around the downward spiral of civilization that we see today. So we understand the equation. The more light that we carry, the more we need to defend that light by spiritual means. Spiritual means. And that's why we're talking about the sword, the sacred word, the sacred fire that rises upon the altar of being. Because these are the elements of God that when we prove ourselves worthy, prove that we have the self-discipline, that we can maintain our harmony, that God will then vouchsafe to us. At the conclusion of his mission, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. This was the power of the Father, Mother, God to work change on a planetary scale. And lo, these 2,000 years, Jesus Christ has borne the burden of our karma, the karma of the entire world. And today, he says, you are mature sons and daughters of God now. Now I give back to you that burden, and I give you the keys to make that burden light, the key of transmutation by the sacred fire of the Holy Ghost, the violet flame itself. Seeing all this in perspective and knowing that there is the axiom from God, I will not give you more light than that light which you can keep in your chakras, in your aura, and in your temple in harmony. When God increases the light in us, then we find that we must be very vigilant because the, power, the powers of darkness of this world seek to take that light, seek to upset us, make us nervous, make us discordant, and so forth. And in a moment of discord, we lose the light that God has given to us, and God does not intend that we should make the karma of losing our light to the demons who would come and take it from us. And so he gives us a minimum of light to see if we can handle it. And then increment by increment, a little more and a little more. There is no shortcut to this path. Some of you have grown up with rituals of prayer, having come from homes of a Catholic, a Buddhist, a Muslim, a Jewish background, or even Protestant. Others of you have never been taught to pray as a child, and it is not a habit. It is not a momentum. But I can tell you, when you feel that all is going well, and you feel wonderful, and you feel good, and so why should I bother taking time to call to Archangel Michael for protection today, or call for my tube of light, or do this, or do that? First thing you know it, hours down the way or perhaps days later, you find that your prayers are thin. You're not all prayed up anymore. You're not protected. And suddenly, without warning, you're hit from this side, you're hit from that side, calamity comes upon you. And all of a sudden you realize that you've lost your temper, or you've done this, or you've done that. And so where has gone the light? So you understand that our Father, Mother, God loves us profoundly and wants us to have that light but not make the karma of losing it. A daily ritual of prayer that begins early in the morning is the richest treasure that anyone can have. This requires that you also go to bed according to ritual at a certain time so that you will have enough sleep to deal with your day. In the morning hours at dawn, 5, 6 a.m., earlier in northern climes in the summer. This is the time when the angels of Uriel's band circle the earth. They visit all of the temples and all of the altars of God. There is a grand ritual of the dawn, and you can participate in that if you make that hour the hour of your meditation and your prayers. I am giving this instruction to myself and my soul while I am speaking to you, because I know that when I awaken at those hours, there's always a pile of work waiting for me, of publications and manuscripts, and I have to decide if I can afford a half hour or an hour of prayer, or I must get these publications done. So we all have our excuses, don't we? 
I have my excuses and I mustn't let them deter me because the world really depends on individual by individual by individual establishing a very strong tie, the tie of a really solid rope from your heart to the heart of Jesus Christ to the heart of your I am presence. When you have that tie through early meditation, the light of God comes pouring down that rope that you have established back to you. And you become God's representative. You become God's open door where through your prayers all of this light can go out for healing to people all over the world that you will never know or meet but will have a lift or a healing because you took that time and you meditated. And of course, you're balancing karma when you pray and decree and so you've lightened your load for the day. Your angel has dropped off at your door at dawn. Your little knapsack of karma for the day that's yours to balance. You can go through a whole day of having all kinds of problems or you can put it into the violet flame at dawn and have a day that is smooth sailing where you get everything done that you plan to do. So I say that the spiritual path starts with this resolution that we can make at summer solstice this year of setting aside that morning time. It belongs to God. It belongs to no one else. And we establish that, and our families and our loved ones will respect it. So when you do this and you are pouring love to God, you are beginning to soften and to activate the raising of the kundalini. When it is raised with mastery and control, it can bring you heightened spiritual powers. When prematurely released, it can be very dangerous. Therefore, the ascended masters caution us to concentrate rather on invoking the violet flame to purify our chakras than focusing merely on the raising of the kundalini, which many individuals do, having no love of Christ, no love of Buddha, no love of Krishna, no love of God and man at all. They do it in order that they might use that power to control others, to control beings of, nat of nature, in other words, to work black magic. This is not acceptable, and anyone who does get so involved is making a horrendous karma. So the violet flame that you invoke creates an aura and a strength around you that makes possible the raising of the kundalini gently and safely, almost without your realizing it. Beloved Saint Germain is our sponsoring master for the raising of the kundalini. You should always establish your oneness with him before you enter meditation and give the bija mantras to the Divine Mother. So the Ascended Masters teach that the Kundalini is the sacred fire of the Divine Mother and that it can be used for great good or great evil. Now you have free will and your exercise of it. Those on the path of personal Christhood knowing that that Christos must be born in them use this sacred fire to heal and to uplift all life. Those on the left-handed path use it to control events people and nature spirits. And so the wages of the misuse of the Divine Mother are horrendous, as I have said. Don't ever be tempted to misuse God's light. Rather bear your karma and suffer than gain something that you have not earned. The symbol of the sword as the raised Kundalini opens a new dimension in our understanding of King Arthur and his sword. Arthur receives Excalibur from the hand of the Divine Mother, represented by the Lady of the Lake. The arm coming out of the water, the water element itself is symbolic of the Mother, is clothed in white, another allusion to the white fire of the Mother raised up. Geoffrey of Monmouth was the first to give Arthur's sword a name. Geoffrey wrote an account of British history in about 1135 AD. He named Arthur's sword Caliburnus, which harks back to Excalibur. X is Latin for out of. Scholars believe the name Excalibur Caliburnus is derived from a Welsh word meaning lightning sword, lightning sword, or the Latin calibs meaning steel or sword, and from Ibernius meaning white as ivory. Combining the etymology with the understanding of the Kundalini, the meaning of Excalibur is revealed as the sword out of the white light, 
or the steely white light of a mother. The sword is also symbolic of the transcendent toughness of the all-conquering spirit. You have a spirit within you, and it is an all-conquering spirit. You simply have to exercise your free will to unleash that spirit for God and for good. Folklore tells of a group of heroes who are considered swords personified. And of course, King Arthur is one of these sword heroes. In King Arthur, we see Abraham come again to defeat with his special sword the very same kings he had slain in the Jordan Valley 26 centuries earlier. An article in Time magazine a few years ago referred to Abraham as a sort of Semitic King Arthur. Arthur wields the power of the raised kundalini with both the sword Excalibur and the scepter of king. He was and is the all-conquering Buddha in our midst. As our guru today, El Moria is the sacred word personified. He is the dispeller of darkness. He is the sword hero of chilas of the will of God. He defends all who submit to the sword of the will of God. He defends all who engage in the sacred word by giving devotions to the will of God in decree and song and mantra and especially the ashram rituals. El Moria shows his chilas how to cut themselves free from the not self and the not sword and how to become who they really are through the sword of the I am presence. The ascended master El Moria is the knight champion of your soul. By your leave, he will work with you side by side, day by day, as you vanquish the dragon of the dweller on the threshold, your own not self, and as you do it, wielding the sword of Archangel Michael. And if El Moria finds you worthy, he may, he may wield his sword Excalibur in your defense. To earn El Moria's respect is the desire of every chila of the will of God. I've met many people whose hero is St. Thomas More, who never would quite nuzzle up to an ascended master of the Far East called El Moria. It is amazing how many Americans today hold Thomas More as the guiding spirit in their lives. The ascended master Jesus once spoke of his own sword and King Arthur. He said, some have not believed me when I said, I came not to send peace, but a sword. That is a quote from the New Testament. Jesus commented on that statement in scripture in a dictation. He said, throughout the ages, I have loaned my sword to special initiates. The well-known legend of Arthur pulling the sword from the stone derives from an initiation of Maitreya's mystery school. The sword from the stone, a Buddhic initiation for one who is king of the Britons. The time did indeed come when I did tell the disciples to take the sword. This is, this is a passage found in Luke 22. Jesus says, Now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. He didn't expect them to arm an army, but perhaps they would need to defend themselves as they went forth to preach his gospel. Jesus' dictation continues. I am not an advocate of war by any means at any price, but I myself am fully engaged in the slaying of unseen demons and discarnates who prey upon my own from the astral plane. And I am fully willing to challenge the mighty and the kings and the potentates Therefore, seek the initiation of the spiritual sword. We can look back at Jesus' instructions to his disciples to sell what they have and buy a sword as a spiritual initiation itself that has nothing to do with physical self-defense, but rather has everything to do with the raising of the kundalini and with the use of the sacred word by which they did command devils, and when they came back the other 70 from their mission, did they not tell Jesus we saw Satan himself fall? And so 
They were putting on their Christhood. They were disciples of Jesus. And the sword that was their sure defense was the sword of the Divine Mother on the spinal altar. Understand that it is a rod of sacred fire fashioned by the Divine Mother out of your own sacred life force. Therefore, the sword that is taken from the stone of matter is a spiritual fire. Legend would have it that it is a magic sword. Beloved, the spiritual fire does dissolve on contact all unlike itself. That is the end of the quote from Jesus' dictation. You're watching Elizabeth Clare Prophet, world-renowned author and founder of Summit University. Summit University is located at the beautiful Royal Teton Ranch in Park County, Montana, just north of Yellowstone National Park. If you'd like more information, call 1-800-245-5445. That's 1-800-245-5445. Now we look at the sword as a symbol of purification by fire. The alchemists of old used the sword as a symbol of this purification by sacred fire. In folklore, when the sword is associated with fire and flames, it symbolizes purification. There are interesting connections between fire and the sword in the Bible. The Hebrew word for the blade of a sword used in the Old Testament also means flame. Genesis depicts a sword of sacred fire for protection or defense. When the Lord God banished Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, he placed at the east gate of the garden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. How many of you have seen the flaming sword monument in our nation's capital? Not too many of you. You need to look for it next time you're there. It's a memorial to the U.S. Army's 2nd Division who fought and died in World War I. The first time I went to Washington, I saw the sword and had to stop dead in my tracks and look at it. The realism of this brilliant, flaming, gold sword, it looks as though it just descended out of heaven from the hand of God. At once, it recalled to me Archangel Michael's sword and the sword Excalibur. Both are symbols of the Sword of Eden, guarding the way of the tree of life for America and every nation. The Ascended Masters teach that the sword also signifies the science of the spoken word. Dynamic decrees are the means whereby you can invoke the sacred fire of God for purification and protection. Revelation uses two graphic symbols of the power of the spoken word. In the battle of Armageddon, the faithful and true leads the armies of heaven. John writes in Revelation 19, In righteousness the faithful and true doth judge and make war, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. This rod of iron suggests Aaron's rod, Aaron, iron. What is most interesting that this sharp sword is really the sharp word of judgment that the faithful and true pronounces upon those who move against God and his servants. In Revelation 11:5, John writes of the two witnesses who prophesy in the last days. If any man shall hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. The sharp sword and the fire out of the mouth are both symbols of the science of the spoken word. And what do these symbols tell us in the book of Revelation? That long ago in ancient times and other golden ages and civilizations such as Atlantis, as well as today and into the future of the Aquarian age, people will more and more use the science of the spoken word. And some will discover everlasting life through the science of the spoken word, and some will misuse it and misuse that word, and therefore misqualify God's light and suffer the consequences. It seems that at this particular period in Earth's history, there is still a certain ignorance, a certain unknowing regarding just how powerful words are, whether in conversation, in argument, 
the tone of the voice, the vibration of the chakras and of the being. You can tell that someone is angry when they are even speaking quietly. You can still feel the vibration of anger and you can quiver from it as it comes into your own aura and your world. More and more than today, people through prayer and mantra and opening up to the teachings of the Far East in mantra will discover that the power of mantra is not in the mantra alone, but in the one who sponsors the mantra. The great Buddha, the great adept, the ascended master, the archangel, who gives us the mantra as a formula. It's almost like the key to opening a safe. So many turns this way, that way, and around again, and you open the safe. So the words that we pronounce, we give Buddhist mantras, Chinese mantras, Hindu mantras, the pronunciation of these words and the rhythm of the mantra is focusing energy in our chakras, whereby, as I said earlier, we can therefore give that light to those who need it. So I think that the very work that we do in our dynamic decrees is something that will catch like a spark that flies round the world and people will come to realize when there are no more solutions, human solutions to human problems, that the way to get tied to God and remain tied to God every day is through the use of mantra. So by the raised kundalini fire, God gives the faithful and true and the two witnesses the authority to send forth the sacred fire. This is the sword of the spirit. It is the word of God. Now we come to Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael is depicted in Christian art with sword and armor of a superhero. As you know, it was Archangel Michael who fought Lucifer and the rebel angels and cast them out of heaven into the earth. I believe they were cast out of heaven into earth bodies as punishment for the rebellion against the divine woman clothed with the sun and her man-child. Early church fathers and later church fathers do disagree vehemently with my conclusion because they say angels never wear physical bodies. And so the disagreement remains. Neither has convinced the other. I see in evil and wickedness in the earth the earmarks and the signs of fallen angels, things so corrupt, so vile, so hideous, that I cannot believe that sons and daughters of God could, could commit such heinous crimes. And therefore, where do we look? We, will, we look to the levels of death and hell and we say, who would have done such a thing and who could do such a thing today? Well, who has already done it? Who has already defied Almighty God and the woman clothed with the sun and her divine man-child? Well, we know who has already done it. Lucifer and the fallen ones who got kicked out of heaven. So Archangel Michael wields his sword of blue flame and he wields it today and he goes about binding those fallen ones who are in the earth and who do torment the woman and her seed, as it is prophesied in Revelation 12. So we know that the blue flame derives from the first ray of God's power, perfection, protection, and faith. The armor necessary in order for sons and daughters of God to wield the sword. Archangel Michael embodies the ray, the flame, the consciousness, and the attributes of the first ray of God. Archangel Michael's sword of blue flame is a sword of sacred fire, and he uses it today almost 23 hours out of the 24 to wage spiritual warfare today. With it, he defends and protects you and me. He cuts us free from unseen forces of evil who attack the Christ within us and within all people. On July 2nd, 1988, Archangel Michael gave us a commission, and this is what he said. The hour is come and now is when every keeper of the flame must wield my sword of blue flame. The word is must. And the reason the word is must is because you can't survive this dark cycle of the Kali Yuga on this planet unless you do wield it. You may survive, but you won't live the very best part of all that's in you and all that you've got to give to God. <clears throat> so. The hour is come and now is when every keeper of the flame must wield my sword of blue flame. Therefore, I commission you who have the talent and the artistry to so design a hefty sword that you may be able to wield without too much difficulty. 
This sword must become physical for you, that I might become physical through you and wield my sword of blue flame superimposed upon it. So by Michaelmas, that's September 29th of 18, 1989, keepers of the flame had their swords in hand. This is Archangel Michael's sword. It has Archangel Michael's name on it, and this is the sword we wield, and I'm going to tell you how to wield it. <clears throat> So on September 30th of 1989, Archangel Michael said, remember to wield the sword that is now in your hand, for I, Archangel Michael, do dedicate this ceremonial sword upon this altar. When you wield it, my hand is placed over your own and my electronic presence is with you. Each and every sword is thus dedicated by me personally. The dedication of the one sword on the altar is simultaneously the dedication of all swords that are and are to be. May you use them and remember that you accomplish 70% of that which the messenger accomplishes when she uses my sharpened sword. Now the sword at the altar is the only sword that is supposed to be sharpened. I hope you are all aware of that rule. We do not want you to have any accidents with your, sh with your swords there is no reason to sharpen them because they are ceremonial swords. However, mine is sharpened because I do the efficacious work of dealing with certain demons where there is definitely a necessity for the sharpened sword. Now, I use my sword every time any one of you calls in distress for help, and I happen to get on that phone call. I have a sword at every phone. So wherever I am, <laughs> <laughs> I pick up that sword and I put you on the speakerphone because my hands are involved in wielding the sword and making calls for you and I visualize you and I can visualize you better of course when you send me your picture I visualize you where you are and you tell me the problem and I take the sword and I am doing all the motions of cutting you free that I'm going to demonstrate on some volunteer from the audience this, after you, this afternoon. So the sharpened sword is very important and it's best that yours remain dull. And so Archangel Michael says, therefore let yours be blunt and let her complete the action with her sharpened sword at the altar. Wielding my sword daily you can accomplish much for your victory. Now, I want you to know that the demons even try to talk me out of using my sword. So if they try to talk me out of using it, just be sure that they will try to talk you out of using it. <clears throat> Archangel Michael protects you from invisible forces, such as discarnate entities and malevolent spirits, called demons and fallen angels. We call discarnate entities discarnates or entities for short. Of course, you know the word entity. Entity means being, and discarnate means without meat or without flesh. So an entity is a being that does not have a physical body. And in fact, they are low-life astral forces who inhabit the astral plane. The astral plane is below the heaven world in vibration. It is a place and a state of consciousness to be avoided at all costs. You can get involved in the astral plane while you are in physical embodiment by taking drugs, by becoming inebriated, by coating your brain with nicotine, uh, by getting involved in all kinds of activities that are not of the light of the sacred heart of Jesus. So measure what you do by the standards of your Lord and you will stay out of the astral plane. If you do things that get you in trouble, Go to your altar, confess your sins, assign yourself a penance of community service and prayers, and get back and be right-centered and right with the heart of God, right with the heart of Jesus. That's a prerequisite in itself to wielding the sword. <clears throat> a discarnate is often the shell of a deceased person that still carries the personality and the momentum of the person, but is minus the soul and has no allegiance to right moral principle it may have had while the soul was in embodiment. So there is this 
um, shaft or sheath of the identity that kind of drifts along like a snakeskin that has come off of a snake. It drifts in the astral plane, but it carries certain momentums of viciousness of the dweller on the threshold of the individual who has passed on and the astral ka itself. So as such, the discarnate entity is dangerous. It is dangerous because it is unseen and it wanders about seeking whose light and energy it may devour. Because it is no longer attached to a person, it must vampirize the living to perpetuate itself. So a discarnate entity that is the shell of a former living person is an empty house. It has a momentum, it, has, it goes on the record and the imprint on that astral body and that astral sheath that is the combined momentum of its previous lifetimes. So Archangel Michael's Sword of Blue Flame is the sword we use to bind mischievous and malevolent spirits who attack individuals and even entire communities and nations. Discarnate entities also attack deceased souls who are making their way to the octaves of light after death. This is why Catholicism and other world religions create, uh, keep a vigil for the deceased person with fervent prayers for that person for a period of a week or two weeks while that soul may be attempting to go beyond the levels of darkness into the realms of light. I have a very important film to show you regarding this with people's testimonies about their near-death experiences. So the point is that when people pass on, they are also vulnerable. And so that is the time when we give the vigil of calls to Astraea and Archangel Michael for the protection of souls of loved ones or anyone that you may see in the news who's passed on. And then in general, we make the call for millions of people collectively. The second type of entity that we deal with on a daily basis is called the mass entity. The mass entity consists of dozens or tens of thousands of entities of similar vibration who band together to form a single body. This mass entity you could see as, for instance, a dark cloud that would cover, for instance, where we are, this geographical location. They're very large and it's a conglomerate of energy that has gained momentum and a rolling momentum by uh, the focusing of darkness and by misusing what light and energy they have. So this mass entity would be the antithesis of what Catholics call the mystical body of God or the mystical body of Christ. The mystical body of God is one body, as Paul says, we are all members of this body. Some are the hands, some are the feet, some are the head. So all of the saints of God and the servants of God, and as far as I'm concerned, they don't have to be Catholic, any of the servants of God anywhere on earth may be counted as part of this mystical body because they are servants of God and because their heart is right with God and right with their Lord. So here you have the mystical body of God, which is a tremendous force for world good. And as in Ascended Master terminology, we call this mystical body of God the Great White Brotherhood. And that simply means all souls of light ascended and unascended. And so then you have these mass entities that move against that body of light. And I can only describe this, these mass entities as coyotes. They move in packs like coyotes, and again, they vampirize the unprotected and unsuspecting. But in their combined strength, they carry a wallop. They are something to be reckoned with. They can perpetuate, for instance, mass suicides or individual suicides. You notice how in a town or a city, one teenager will commit suicide and then 10 others will commit suicide. Well, this is because of the momentum of the individual who committed suicide and in the suicidal state attracted to himself others uh, who are still embodiment, who are very depressed and who respond to that vibration, who don't know how to get out of it, who don't have a path of prayer, a path of religion, have not been acquainted with God, have nothing to reach out to, and so along comes the discarnate of the one who just committed suicide, and along comes the mass entity of suicide, and the momentum can be so overwhelming 
as to cause many others to commit suicide, and we saw a rash of this uh, in, the, in the past decade and earlier. And as a result of that, going back to uh, my acquaintance with someone in our organization who had attempted suicide, uh, I sat down and I wrote the entity decree, the suicide entity decree. I just want to point out to you that it is in your decree book. It's called 711S. It's called the suicide entity decree. Now, there are four sides to this decree simply because if you are going to take your sword of blue flame and you are going to make calls for the binding of the suicide entity, you have to be absolutely thorough. And now and again, we get calls from people who are suicidal on our Lifeline to the Presence telephone service that our ministers answer. And relatives of staff members or relatives of keepers of the flame. And my advice always and always is, take the suicide entity decree, gather as many of those who want to decree with you together. Give this call with all the fervor and devotion and power of your being nine times on behalf of this person who is suicidal. You can associate with that calls to Archangel Michael and other calls. But if you do your work well and use this decree, you will find, especially if you have a picture of the person who's suicidal, take your sword of blue flame and cut around the picture, you will find that that person will come out of it and will go on and will wonder how they ever could have contemplated suicide. So when the rash of suicides got greater and greater and now we have Kevorkian running around, pulling the plugs on people and helping them die, it's very important that we remember that this is a tool given to us by the Brotherhood in our understanding of decrees, and it works. It's very powerful. We had a rash of suicides in Livingston, Montana, and we just decided we were going to decree on this until it stopped, and it stopped. So you remember that because there are all these keys that we need. So there are serial killers. They can perpetuate mass suicides, kill, serial killers, and give the street drug scene all the power they need to carry on the destruction of bodies and souls. Mass entities give life to ethnic wars, such as we see in Bosnia-Herzegovina, and even the planetary consciousness of a one-world socialist dictatorship. Mass entities ram religious movements and persecute the servants of God day and night. There are many different kinds of discarnate entities. And if you have a, a complete decree book, you'll see 711E gives the actual names of various entities. For instance, the death entity and the suicide entity is called Anila. The entity of murderous intent is called Columnus. The sleep entity is Dorme. The lynch mob entity is Gargantua, and so forth. Now, the reason that we have these names is because I was pondering the teachings of Jesus in the Bible where he asks the possessing demons, what is thy name? And they respond to him, our name is legion, for we are many. Jesus cast them out of the man and into the pigs. The swine ran down the hill and into the sea because they would rather be dead than be infested by entities, much more intelligent than many humans who are uh, infested by entities. <laughs> so, when I realized that we needed to name the entities for them to be bound, if Jesus needed the name to cast them out, whether he was doing it as an example for his disciples or not, I thought to myself, I better very quickly get the names of the typical discarnate entities that we deal with. So Mark Prophet was with me then, and I asked him to give me these names from the Holy Spirit, and he did, and you will find this in your decree book, 711. If you are dealing with the cocaine entity, with crack or, or uh, marijuana entity, heroin entity, and so forth, their names are here. If you have a loved one who is addicted, it's very important to name the name. So that's that concept. So there's the entities of liquor, marijuana, suicide, anger, gossip. Gossip is carpia and harpia. Fear is phobia. Depression is depressa and manic. Gambling, gambling is Luciana, weeping, weepa, and so forth. So remember that I've told you about this because the day will come when you will need those decrees. Now, we go back to Madame Blavatsky. 
the indomitable spirit of woman in the last century who defied all of her adversaries and set forth the teachings of the Eastern adepts, K.H., the Master M., Master of the House of Rakazi, and even Serapis Bay. So that a physical sword can cause the dismemberment of malevolent spirits was known to the ancients. Helena Blavatsky writes in her work, Isis Unveiled, some demons or elementary spirits are afraid of sword, knife, or anything sharp. Blavatsky quotes from a work on demons by Sellis, who says, any hard substance striking discarnate spirits can make them sensible to pain. And though their bodies be made neither of solid nor firm substance, they feel it the same. If you divide him in two, he will feel the pain as would any living man. One thing, however, distinguishes him from the living man, namely, that when a man's limbs are once divided, their parts cannot be reunited very easily. But cut a demon in two, and you will see him immediately join himself together. But every rent made in his body causes him pain nevertheless. That is why demons dread the point of a sword or any sharp weapon. Let those who want to see them flee try the experiment. Blavatsky says, one of the most learned scholars of his century, Baudin, held that invisible spirits are sorely afraid of swords and daggers. It is also the, it is also the opinion of Porphyry and Iamblichus and Plato. Plutarch mentions it several times. Baudin tells us a wonderful story to this effect in his work on the demons. And so this is the story. A local shoemaker's household was being harassed by a discarnate entity, so much so that they did not have a moment's rest. Someone advised the shoemaker to pray to God with all his heart and to swing a sword in the air about the room. The shoemaker did this. Baudin says, from that very moment, they did not hear the least noise in the house. End of quote. The Elohim Astrea warns that invisible forces cause more problems than most of us realize. She said, have you noticed how dogs seem to bark into the air in this direction and that, and there is nothing there? They see the astral plane. They see the astral entities. They warn you. They are your protectors. Blue lightning angels overshadow faithful canines who sense their mission to protect and defend you and your life. Or perhaps you have noted your own sudden mood changes. You may become angry, you may become sad, you may become depressed. Yes, it may be the product of medication or wrong diet, but more than likely you have walked into a cloud bank made up of hundreds of demons who are waiting to pounce when you are at your weakest point physically and emotionally. And when you are at that weakest point, that is precisely when Lord Maitreya or Lord Jesus Christ expects you to pass your tests. The great initiator, as Maitreya is called, must know what your response will be when you are under the greatest pressure and in the situation of the greatest weakness. We can all pass our tests when we're feeling great and we're feeling strong and we can meet any crisis. That's a given. But how will you bear up when you are at your low point? So Maitreya wants you to discover your own weakest link, your own weakest link, so you can turn it into your strongest chain mail. Beware then when all is peace and suddenly there is an explosion of argument and anger in a confrontation between family members, neighbors, or bordering states. Even people who love each other deeply can suddenly be at odds because they fail to take into account the X factor in life, the misqualified power of sinister, unseen forces. See things for what they are and deal objectively with anyone, including yourself, whose emotional body is out of control. Realize that you are dealing with principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And the Apostle Paul was talking about the levels of the fallen angels and their occupying of positions of power in the earth as well as in the astral plane, and the, that is the world of death and hell. So these fallen angels move against your most cherished hopes and dreams. They dash the cup of light before you can drink the elixir handed to you by a seraphim of God. Thus it was known in the ancient traditions of the adepts that malevolent discarnate entities may be injured by the blade of a stainless steel sword. 
and therefore they may be cut in two or in ten or smashed to smithereens, and they may be bound from wrecking harm by the action of Archangel Michael's sword, which you wield. You must understand that this is a spiritual work at the same time that it is a physical work. Truly, it does span the physical and the astral planes. Archangel Michael says we should be ashamed to allow demons and discarnates of any kind to trick us when we are off guard. He says in that moment when those little demons come and jump on your shoulders and cry out for recognition, you must in that very moment thrust forth your sword. If the truth were known, these demons actually fear the flame in your heart. They know their only hope is to trick you into feeling that you are somehow separated from God. They know that's a lie, but they know that they have to catch you off guard. And because they already know that they are no match for the Christ or the God flame within you, they simply keep trying to deceive you. They already know that you have all power from God if you will claim it. And there's the rub. There's the daily decision. Do you claim that power in the moment when you need to claim it to defeat some thought that isn't right, some energy that comes around? So they have to trick you into failing to claim that power, if but for an instant, in the moment when they come. Lanello says, don't become fair game for any little half-pint demon that desires to unhorse you and does. Okay, the first thing you have to do to be sure that you are protecting yourself when you use the sword is to use Archangel Michael's song and decree tape daily. I keep many decree and song tapes in my car, but the first tape that always goes in and that I play until I'm satisfied is the song and decree tape of Archangel Michael. I keep them at different stations where I serve because I always want to have that access to Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael has told us that tens of thousands and millions of souls are being saved through the use of that tape by thousands and thousands of our members around the world. I use it in every spare moment as I make fiats for the protection of every single light bearer and servant of God in the universe, worlds without end, because I know there is no time and space that the call you make and the call I make will cover the entire universe and every servant of God in it. So why settle for less when you can make the call for billions of souls as easily as you can make it for one, and Archangel Michael is truly up to the task. Decree it full voice. Don't turn down that, that decree tape and don't turn down your voice. Speak with one as having authority and not as the scribes. That's what they said of Jesus. He spoke as one who had authority. You are speaking in the, author in the name, in the authority of your I am presence and Holy Christ self. And when it comes to demons, you have to command them to disperse. Okay, here are the steps. First of all, when you're going to use the sword, you go to your altar. And you can set up the altar in your home using the portable altar that has the chart of the presence, the beautiful pictures of Saint Germain and Jesus, Kuthumi, and El Moria. That altar with two candles and a little bowl as a chalice is sufficient for the establishment of a sacred place, however small it may be, a little table, where you go, where you pray, and where you have a momentum. So you go to your altar and with profound devotion, offer an invocation from your heart to the heart of Archangel Michael. How do you decide what to pray about? You just give it a second's thought. What is burdening you the most today? I will tell you what is burdening me the most today, and that's what I'm going to make a call for at the altar by way of demonstrating a use of the sword. What burdens me most today is the attempted bombing of New York by eight individuals who were in the act of putting together the explosives to bomb the UN, to bomb the federal building, and the Holland and Lincoln tunnels whom the FBI had been watching and decided to pounce on when it was clear they were ready to act. This bothers me profoundly because it tells me New York is vulnerable. If New York is vulnerable, every city of America is vulnerable and every city in the world. This is a very serious matter. So 
For that reason, I would go to my altar, and this is how I would pray, and I would have my sword in hand. <clears throat> In the name of the light of God that never fails, I call to you, beloved Archangel Michael. Take command now of the situation of foreign nationals entering this country, entering this country and determining to destroy our institutions of freedom, our citizens, and to keep our people in a continuous state of stress, not knowing when they shall be near a bomb that goes off. I direct the legions of light in the name of my mighty I am presence and holy Christ self, Archangel Michael and the hosts of the Lord, to New York and every city upon earth where there are those who would move against even the great dispensation of freedom and light, the dispensation of America and every nation this day. Therefore, I call for the power of the sword of Archangel Michael to descend this day, and to that end I make this call. Beloved Archangel Michael, take command of terrorism in New York, America, and the entire world. Take command now. Take command now, take command with your legions of light. I thank thee and I accept it done this hour in full power, amen. So you make your personal invocation. Next, you invoke your tube of light. I would like to ask you to stand to invoke your tube of light from the heart, head and hand decrees. They're in the angel booklet about on page two or three. Now invoking your tube of light is a command for God's light to descend around you. You don't say it in an amby-pamby little conversational tone. You follow your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You speak with authority to the world and you, and you speak with humility to your God. So now speak to that presence of the living God above you and say with me. Beloved, I am presence bright. Round me seal your tube of light. From ascended master flame, call forth now in God's own name. Keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire. Keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with a violet flame. Beloved, I am presence bright, round seal or tube of light. From ascended master flame, call forth now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire, blaze and transmute all desire. Keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with a violet flame. Beloved, I am presence bright, round me seal your tube of light. From ascended master flame, call forth thou in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire. Keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with a violet flame. And I would like to give with you the longer tube of light decree from St. Germain, which is at the beginning of your decree book. Decree 0.01. Together. Oh, my constant loving I am presence, thou light of God above me, whose radiance forms a circle of fire before me to light my way. I am faithfully calling to thee to place a great pillar of light from my own mighty I am God presence all around me right now today. Keep it intact through every passing moment, manifesting as a shimmering shower of God's beautiful light through which nothing human can ever pass. Into this beautiful electric circle of divinely charged energy, direct the swift upsurge of the violet fire of freedom's forgiving transmuting flame. Cause the ever-expanding energy of this flame projected downward into the force field of my human energies to completely change every negative condition into the positive polarity of my own great God self. Let the magic of its mercy so purify my world with light, that all whom I conduct shall always be blessed with the fragrance of violence from God's own heart. In memory of the blessed dawning day when all discord, cause, effect, record, and memory is forever changed into the victory of light and the peace of the ascended Jesus Christ. I am now constantly accepting the full power and manifestation of this fiat of light. 
and calling it into instantaneous action by my own God-given free will, and the power to accelerate without limit the sacred release of assistance from God's own heart, until all men are ascended and God-free in the light that never, never, never fails. I like to give that one three times. Now you can be seated. At this point in your preparation, you're going to take any decree to Archangel Michael and give it nine times. So let us do that. The preparation you are doing to wield this sword will give you the full protection to tackle any real serious national or international crisis with your sword. But do not underestimate the anger of demons whom you challenge, just one set of demons that is infesting and causing some kind of illness or sickness upon one individual that is a loved one. Demons are vicious whether there are five of them or five million of them. So you go to the blue section and you say, let me see, which Archangel Michael decree will I give today? So we'll take 1007 because this is a wonderful teaching. Decree 1007, I am Michael, Michael, Michael. How can you say, I am Michael, Michael, Michael? When you say the name of Archangel Michael and put before it the name of God, I am that I am, you are affirming, here I am, where I stand, there is Archangel Michael. Then you take your favorite painting, stained glass window by Tiffany, any of the great artists of the past centuries of this Archangel, and you keep that one that is your favorite one, and you visualize Archangel Michael in that pose, placing his entire presence over you. You can visualize him nine feet tall or 20 feet tall, and you're inside of the bosom of Archangel Michael making this call. So you and Archangel Michael are one. You are bonded together. You are affirming, I am Michael, Michael, Michael. God in me, where I am, is Archangel Michael. And then it says, what happens? I stand within his flame by God's own I am name, his faith ablazing here, his power and love so dear. You can do this with any ascended master. You can call to the living presence of Jesus Christ or the Blessed Mother. And in giving the Hail Mary, you can ask to Mother Mary to place her presence over you. The visualization for this, when you desire to have this communion with an ascended master or archangel, is first of all, you bow to the light of your I am presence. I would turn around and bow to the chart. And I bow, for instance, to the Blessed Mother or to St. Michael the Archangel. And first of all, I will visualize that wondrous being whom I love so profoundly, who is such a wonderful one who has helped me in my life. And that is true of St. Michael and also of Mother Mary. And so in gratitude and love, I am pouring forth devotion. This is the, the path of bhakti yoga, where you and the beloved or the teacher are separate. You are still in the state of worshiping the ascended master. And so then as you begin to give the mantra, you visualize the master coming toward you. And this great love of your heart and the great love of Archangel Michael's heart as we, as we give this decree, you feel then and you see that Archangel Michael does place his presence over you and you are one. So now you are affirming that you and Archangel Michael are one, hence you are in his aura, Archangel Michael. You have merged as one for the purposes of this mantra. This is extremely effective. Every demon in the cosmos trembles at the name St. Michael, the Archangel. Look at how many times we're going to affirm this. We're gonna give this nine times standing in full power and full voice. Before we begin, I want each and every one of you to make your invocation as I made my personal one at the altar. You make an invocation about one thing or ten things, and after that we'll begin.
Now you've made many calls individually, and I don't want to mislead you. When you're using the sword, you do have to focus on issue by issue, tackle it, deal with it, and be certain that you have completed your ritual so that you don't get that kind of a backlash from uh, the reaction of demons who are not quite bound because you've not quite focused and not quite finished your work. So let us take this 1007 preamble. In the name of the beloved, mighty, victorious presence of God, I am in me, my very own beloved, only Christ self, holy Christ selves of all mankind, beloved Archangel Michael and Feet and the legions of the lightning angels, beloved and not only entire spirit of the great Lord God of the world, mother, element of life, fire, air, water, and earth, I decree. I am Michael, 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 I stand within his strength. I am Michael, 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 by God's own name. I am Michael, 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 Michael. his faith of raising here. I am Michael, 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 his power not so dear. I am Michael, 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 to light and love I vow. I am Michael, 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 to defend the faith I vow. I am Michael, 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 I am this and I am I am Michael, 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 America is then. I am Michael, 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 to shield of faith I wear. I am Michael, 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 his second sword I bear. I am Michael, 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 and army by his out. I am Michael, 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 who any come about. I am Michael, 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 the nation die as well. I am Michael, 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 the captain of the law. I am Michael, 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 his legion not be sent. I am Michael, 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 his title like the bend. I am Michael, 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 I like am in his name.
Archangel Michael descend upon you. Hail, Archangel Michael. using this sword. It's, it's an altar sword of Archangel Michael that came to me long before we got the other swords, and I think you can see it a little better. So now, you ready? You take your sword. It has his name inscribed on it. It has been blessed by him. So you hold it upright vertically with your dominant hand. And when you thus hold it, you visualize in the same moment the sacred fire rising on your spinal altar from the base chakra, the coccyx, to the crown, and then being anchored in the third eye, which is a symbol of the caduceus. So if you'll close your eyes and remember the sword is the sacred word, the sword is the scepter, and it is the sacred fire of the Divine Mother. When you wield Archangel Michael's sword and he stands over you, his kundalini, of course, is raised. So he is placing himself over you, and his being, as the being of a cosmic being, is magnetizing everything in your being to the highest level of the consciousness of the Christ that you can hold. Now at this point, you give powerful fiats, and you make cutting motions around you. So I'm going to use the little sword and come forward so you can see me. In the name of my mighty I am presence and Archangel Michael, I call to be cut free now from all that is less than the Christ and the Buddha and the Atman within me. I ask that I might be made a chalice for the living God this day in the service of all mankind. And to that end, I call you, beloved Archangel Michael, to wield this sword, to place your hand over my hand, and to perform this service that I might serve thee better. First, I begin with whirling the sword like this. And I'm touching my heart, so I'm connected to the heart chakra. This whirling action that I am doing makes absolutely certain that there is nothing between me and my God, that the flame that descends from my I am presence and holy Christ self, that that is entirely clear. Then I will begin cutting away around the body. Now as I am cutting, I might visualize that I'm going through very the deep jungle, and I'm cutting at the roots. I cut across the front, 
across my chakras to be absolutely certain that nothing is burdening those chakras. I cut along the spine. Very vigorously, I make sure to cut behind at the point of this neck and at the, the point of the mandula because that is where discarnate entities of addictions, nicotine entities, marijuana entities, alcohol entities, they fasten their claws right here and the whole length of the spine. So you must get rid of them with a sword, with prayer and fasting, with a strong will, and a support group if you need it. You will change hands because you want to give the other side. Do not neglect cutting underneath each foot. You direct the sword of blue flame under each foot and into the earth because the earth, of course, has many records. Cut around each leg <laughs> and around the back and that is sufficient. So that is your own personal daily protection. The same kind of motions that I'm making, you can make around photographs of loved ones or around loved ones if they will submit. <laughs> <laughs> if they're not interested, it's not even necessary to tell them that you're doing it. <laughs> we learned that lesson once one of our members proudly said to her husband that the reason he had quit smoking was because she had made all these calls for him. He became enraged and began smoking again because he wasn't going to be caught giving up smoking because somebody had prayed for him. Now, instead of uh, instructing you, what I would be doing when I'm making this call is to give the traveling protection. So let's all give that little mantra. Lord Michael before, Lord Michael behind, Lord Michael to the right, Lord Michael to the left, Lord Michael above, Lord Michael below, Lord Michael, Lord Michael wherever I go. I am his love protecting here, I am his love protecting here, I am his love protecting here. Lord Michael before, Lord Michael behind, Lord Michael to the right, Lord Michael to the left, Michael above, Lord Michael below, Lord Michael, Lord Michael wherever I go. I am his love protecting here, I am his love protecting here, I am his love protecting here. Lord Michael before, Lord Michael behind, Lord Michael to the right, Michael to the left, Michael above, Michael below, Lord Michael, Lord Michael wherever I go. I am his love protecting here, I am his love protecting here, I am his love protecting here. Now let us take Decree 10.10. .10. It's in the Angels booklet and in your Decree book in the blue section. Are you sure you have the new Angel booklet? You see blue cross, blue flame protection. It is during the giving of this decree that we wield our sword. And you will see that the preamble, the third paragraph of the preamble says this. I make the sign of the cross and visualize its blazing reality and manifestation before me. So you will take your sword and make the sign of the cross in front of you. Behind me, make the sign of the cross behind you. Then to your left. In other words, you are boxing yourself in with blue flame crosses. To my right, making a, a large sign of the cross. Beneath, so you point the sword down and visualize it beneath you. Above, all the way on top of you. And in the center of your form, making the sign in the center of the torso and making the cross. So that, I believe, is seven times. And we complete the ritual by doing it nine times. We all stand when doing this. And of course, that is why we don't allow swords in, in church, because everybody's too close to everybody to be wielding a sword. But you can make the sign of the cross with your hands. Now, this is a preamble which directs your attention to the hosts of light. And specifically, if you will get the book of the Great White Brotherhood, or the ABCs of your cosmic clock, you will note that the masters in the preamble are positioned on the 12 lines of the cosmic clock to assist you in developing 
the powers and attainments of God and binding the imperfections. So this little verse at the bottom is very important because when you decide to become a teammate of Archangel Michael, you are in the big league of Archangel Michael's and his legions and those whom they challenge. So we must challenge the enemies of our friend, Archangel Michael, and we do so in his name. So if you look at this mantra, it says, Beloved mighty I am presence, in the name of divine justice and mercy, in the name of the Christ, in the name of the light of God that never fails, I say to all Nephilim, Nephilim is the word for fallen angels, which we find in, in the Old Testament scripture. I say to all Nephilim, human creation, seed of Satan, satanic rites, black magic, and the cursing of hell. You have no power. Your day is done. Be thou dissolved and consumed from the body of the earth forever. I am, I am, I am. By all God's light and love, I know I am. The cosmic victory and power of light everywhere forever. I would like to invite you then to give this decree, which we always give standing, so that we can make the sign of the cross. Together. Beloved, mighty, victorious presence of God, I am in me. Thou immortal and fit flame of Christ's love within my heart. Holy Christ cells of all light bearers of the world. Beloved, great divine director. Beloved, Saint Germain. Beloved, Jesus the Christ. Beloved, Jesus. Beloved, 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 Beloved Seraphis Bay, Beloved Goddess of Liberty, Beloved Lord Lanto, Beloved Beloved Cyclopeia, Beloved Lord Maitreya, Beloved Lanello, the entire spirit of the Great White Brother and the World Mother, Elemental Light, Fire, Air, Water, and Earth, in the name and by the power of the presence of God which I am, and by the magnetic power of the sacred fire vested in me. I invoke the mighty presence and power of the Ascended Master's Blue Flame Cross as an invincible shield of cosmic light substance which shall act as a mighty pillar of blue flame protection in manifestation throughout my entire consciousness, being, and world, 24 hours a day. O oh, beloved, I am presence in the heart of all life as I giving the fallen decree nine times, fulfilling the cosmic power of the three times three. I make the sign of the cross and visualize its blazing reality and manifestation before me, behind me, to my left, to my right, beneath, above, and in the center of my form, marking the individualized focus of God's own mighty I am presence, descending as a mighty stream of radiant light energy, charged to do his holy will as God in manifestation in this world of form. Beloved, mighty I am presence in the name of divine justice and mercy, in the name of the Christ, in the name of the light of God that never fails. I say to all Nephilim, human creation, seed of Satan, satanic rites, black magic and the cursing of hell. You have no power, your day is done. Be thou dissolved and consumed from the body of the earth forever. I am, I am, I am. By all God's light and love, I know I am. The cosmic victory and power of life everywhere forever. Beloved, mighty I am presence in the name of divine justice and mercy, in the name of the Christ, in the name of the light of God that never fails. I say to all Nephilim, human creation, seed of Satan, satanic rites, black magic, and the cursing of hell. You have no power, your day is done. Be thou dissolved and consumed in the body of the earth forever. I am, I am, I am, by all God's light and love, I know I am. The cosmic victory and power of life everywhere forever. Beloved, mighty I am presence in the name of divine justice and mercy, in the name of the Christ, in the name of the light of God that never fails, I say to all Nephilim, human creation, seed of Satan, satanic rites, black magic, and the cursing of hell, you have no power, your day is done. Be thou dissolved and consumed in the body of the earth forever. I am, I am, I am, by all God's light and love, I know I am. The cosmic victory and power of light everywhere forever. Beloved, mighty I am presence in the name of divine justice and mercy, in the name of the Christ, in the name of the light of God that never fails. I say to all Nephilim, human creation, seed of Satan, satanic rites, black magic, and the cursing of hell, you have no power, your day is done. He thou dissolved in the tomb of the body of the earth forever. I am, I am, I am, by all God's light and love, I know I am, a cosmic victory and power of life everywhere forever. 
Be loving, mighty I am presence in the name of divine justice and mercy, in the name of the Christ, in the name of the light of God that never fails. I am, I am, I am, by all God's light and love I know I am, the cosmic victory and power of life everywhere forever. Beloved, mighty I am present in the name of divine justice and mercy, in the name of the Christ, in the name of the light of God that never fails. I say to all Nephilim, human creation, the seed of Satan, satanic rites, black magic, and the cursing of hell, you have no power, your day is done. Be thou dissolved and consumed in the body and the earth forever. I am, I am, I am, by all God's light and love I know I am. The cosmic victory and power of life everywhere forever. Beloved, mighty I am presence in the name of divine justice and mercy. In the name of the Christ, in the name of the light of God that never fails. I say to all Nephilim, human creation, seed of Satan, satanic rites, black magic, and the cursing of hell. You have no power. Your day is done. Be thou dissolved and consumed in the body of the earth forever. I am, I am, I am. By all God's light and love I know I am. The cosmic victory and power of life everywhere forever. Beloved, mighty I am present in the name of divine justice and mercy, in the name of the Christ, in the name of the light of God that never fails. I say to all Nephilim, human creation, seed of Satan, satanic rites, black magic, and cursing of hell, you have no power, your day is done. Be thou dissolved and consumed in the body of the earth forever. I am, I am, I am, my all God's light and love, I know I am, cosmic victory, power, life, everywhere, forever. Beloved, mighty I am present in the name of divine justice and mercy, in the name of Christ, in the name of the light of God that never fails. I say to all Nephilim, human creation, seed of Satan, satanic rites, black magic, and the cursing of hell, you have no power, your day is done. Be thou dissolved and consumed in the body of the earth forever. I am, I am, I am, my all God's light and love, I know I am, cosmic victory and power of life, everywhere, forever. Thank you. Please be seated. So we've covered cutting around ourselves. And as I demonstrated, you do the same around family members or around photographs. When you have finished wielding your sword for people you are personally, karmically responsible for, you can turn your attention and your sword to the big picture. So you, you use the lighted globe that you have placed before your statue of the Blessed Mother, as you see this displayed before this statue of Our Lady of Fatima. So you pinpoint in your mind's eye the cities, states, nations, and continents to which you would direct, in Archangel Michael's name, bolts of blue lightning and shafts of white fire that come forth right out of the tip of Archangel Michael's sword. So I would go to that globe and I would turn it towards me to the place that I am working on and I would visualize that place if I'm going to do let's say a week's worth of work on a certain major international situation or problem I would get pictures of the city pictures of people involved pictures of people negotiating whatever they're supposed to be negotiating in Bosnia Herzegovina and so forth so I would surround myself with the familiar areas I religiously watch the news because I want to see with my own eyes and record in my inner being those persons, places, and areas of the world that are having problems. I've met many people who are on the spiritual path. They don't want to watch the news. They don't want to read the newspapers because it uh, makes them feel weak. It makes their auras collapse, etc., etc. Well, that's not the way of the Savior we follow. He was in, in the fray and in the midst and un, unfearing to challenge the fallen ones of his time. So we have to know what's going on in the world so that we can direct the light of our hearts to support people, to help people, and to cut them free, literally, from Satanists incarnate. And you tell me what else are people that will continue to massacre to the level of genocide the peoples in Bosnia today. Tell me that those are sons and daughters of God who are committing these crimes against humanity. And tell me where is the heart and the conscience and the divine light within our leaders who allow this to continue. It's the sacrilege of the century. So you pick your spot. It could be your own hometown. Be sure you have a good picture of it and of what you're trying to accomplish. You can even write it down.
so that you have clearly in mind what you want the results, let's say, of a, a novena, a nine-day period of prayer on a certain subject that you want to tend to, you, to tend to without fail. Right now, a nine-day novena would be greatly appreciated by us in our situation with the IRS and their revocation. revocation. We believe uh, inadvertently or illegally, but nevertheless, they revoked our tax-exempt status and we are fighting to get it back. And that's a very important battle that must be won. So when you've picked your project, then be faithful to it daily. So Archangel Michael's name, the bolts of blue lightning and the shafts of white fire, will consume nests of evil, the virulent force of epidemics, satanic rituals, including child sacrifice, organized crime, racial tensions in South Africa, mob violence happening in the United States after sports events, neo-Nazi violence against Turks, plots to blow up key buildings and transportation arteries, and the violation of Mother Earth, which is what this conference is all about. And last but not least, this action of the sword will consume the persecution of our church by the media, by angry locals, by environmentalist groups, or even representatives in the federal government who would like to see us lose our water rights to the healing waters that come from our geothermal well. So you're pointing the tip of the sword to the exact location you want Archangel Michael to clear. What our desire is to see is that those who have been snared into working the works of evil will be cut free by our work also, that they will be cut free by the sword of the flame of Archangel Michael so that they can come into their right mind and their right conscience and bend the knee and confess the Lord and be converted to him by the Holy Spirit. These calls will not bring harm to anyone. They will work to separate people from a consciousness that is not God's, but is the consciousness of death and hell that somehow they have got entrapped in. If you use your sword of blue flame daily, you are making your calls for that 24-hour period. Each 24-hour period, even if you spend a very small amount of time, please go back and reinforce the call because all of God's light returns to the level of perfection. So we have to draw it down. If we want to keep it in this world of imperfection, it has to come here through our prayers and devotions held in the chalices of our being, our chakras. Now, another action that you can take is to turn clockwise at the altar a full 360 degrees and stopping every few degrees as you go around in the circle. And if you wish, you can see yourself turning on a cosmic clock that you imagine is on the floor with a 12 o'clock line at the altar as you face it and the 6 o'clock line behind you. If you know your clock, which you can study in that Great White Brotherhood book, you can clear your city or hemisphere on each line and also invoke the God powers and hierarchies of the lines. If you perform this ritual in the name of the seven archangels and the seven holy kumaras, mighty light rays will pass through your heart and through the sword, right from your heart, through your arm, through the sword, and they will pierce through. And since there is no time and space, when you have a momentum on wielding this sword and you take this action, the light that goes forth is God's light from Archangel Michael passed through you. There's no barrier to that light. It traverses the entire spirit matter cosmos. Nothing can stop the ray of light of God. Alternately, when you have concluded calling for bolts of blue lightning and white flame to go forth to break up uh, the dense calcification of evil, you can call for the violet ray and direct the violet ray in the same action going around in the 360 degrees on the lines. And you will have the same marvelous results, except this time it is transmutation that you are seeking after your initial work with the blue ray, which breaks up substance so that it can be transmuted more easily by the violet flame and the violet flame angels. This violet flame invoked by you can balance your karmic debts wherever you have made karma in the matter cosmos. You may not have always lived on this planet, 
as easily that you could have been born on another one than this one. And so on that planet and in other systems of worlds, you may have ties of karma. When you go around 360 degrees every day and you do this for a number of years, by and by, you will have touched every point where you have ever been in this physical universe and made good karma or bad karma. Chamuel says you can call to any of the archangels or the seraphim as you perform this ritual and you should say, O oh, blessed archangels and holy kumaras, place your presence over me now. In thy name I send God's love, my love, to the farthest reaches of time and space in the matter cosmos. Archangel Chamuel promises, if you use this technique regularly and with supreme devotion for many years to come, you will eventually contact every point of karma that you have ever made in any direction on any system of worlds, and you will be directing the sacred fire of God into the cause, effect, record, and memory of it, and it will be consumed because God keeps his promises as long as we are right with his heart. So I'm going to come forward and do this 360 degrees, even though it's fairly obvious. <clears throat> I'm facing the altar, I call to Almighty God, direct the full power of the blue lightning of the mind of God on every degree of the 360 degrees of the cosmic clock. Let these mighty light rays go forth in the name of the entire mystical body of God, the great white brotherhood, in or on all worlds whatsoever. Let the light of God that never fails go forth now across the entire cosmos. And upon these mighty light rays, let our message of hope and faith and charity and deliverance be unto all people who are in darkness and all who wait for the coming, the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I make this call in the name of Almighty God, and I accept it on this hour in full power. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Divine Mother, Amen. Now this is very good exercise. <laughs> so instead of just doing aerobics for nothing, you can wield your sword and get a lot of action that's spiritual too. Next, we come to Purity and Estrella, as they are going to deliver their dictation today. They are Elohim, which is the Hebrew plural noun for God, which we find in Genesis and throughout the Old Testament. Elohim, the divine us. They're on the fourth ray. They embody the white ray and the white light of purity for all evolutions of the cosmos. When you invoke any one of the seven rays, it descends to what is called the plane of invocation. The plane of invocation is the place from which you make the call. You make the call from your heart as you are in a certain level, certain wavelength, certain compartment of this physical universe. We live in a certain band of time and space. For all we know, there are evolutions in bands above us and evolutions bands below us. So, a ray of light comes from the heart of God in the great central sun when you invoke a flame. The ray of light descends, and at the plane of invocation, which is your heart, the flame springs into being. We don't have a flame until we first have a ray of light that has come to that plane and springs forth into a flame. So remember, there's a difference between a ray and a flame. There's a blue ray, which manifests the blue flame in answer to your call. So when it reaches that point of origin, the origin of your call, it leaps as a flame, and that flame will be sustained in your aura as long as you sustain the heart tie to the ray and its source in the great central sun. So that's an interesting fact of spiritual science. The flames of God are not native to this imperfect world. So it is people who are the living temple of God who sustain that flame by devotion. The Elohim Estrella wields a circle and sword of blue flame, and we see that on the screen now. It's a simple drawing, but it conveys the concept. 
The circle of blue flame is actually made up of two concentric rings that oscillate as a blue-white lightning. Astraea says that her cosmic circle of blue-white lightning and her sword of blue flame are counted among the greatest instruments ever employed for the freedom of this planet and her evolutions. Astraea compares the circle of blue flame to a precision tool in the hand of a master surgeon because it painlessly removes all records, karmas, vibrations, entities, etc., that detract from the Christ consciousness in you. Astraea can best help you when you keep your sacred fire raised up. The strength of the Divine Mother on your spinal altar is a major key to your spiritual victory. Astraea says the sacred fire raised up within you is the sword that you wield. In other words, the sword of Archangel Michael is symbolical you are actually taking in hand your own sacred fire, kundalini fire, when you wield a sword. So you see, every sword, every sword will have its own momentum, carrying the momentum of your light and your fire. Working together with my sword to dispel all unlike itself is your sword as the sacred fire raised up in you. The demons cannot linger or loiter around you when you keep the sacred fire raised up and protected. And when it is kept raised with a certain steady strength, it begins to vibrate in polarity with Ascension's flame at Luxor. This is one of these forgotten tidbits of a dictation of Astraea. When you have such a presence of the sword on your spinal altar, it begins to vibrate with the ascension flame that is on the ethere in the etheric temple, the retreat of Serapis Bay, the ascension temple in the locale of Luxor, Egypt, which if you make your ascension at the conclusion of this life, that is where you would be. So imagine, by this momentum that you gather with the sword, you can actually feel that oscillation between you and that flame long before you ever step on that dais and enter into union with God. When you accomplish this relationship with the ascension flame, then I also come with my blue flame sword and I hold it three inches from your spine or at a greater distance, depending on the attainment and purity you are able to hold in your chakras. Yes, when you do your part, I am able to wield a momentum of light for you that may cross time and space to clear the records of past karmas. When you are not protected, astral entities lock into your spine and leech your very life force from you like vampires. And that is exactly what they do at every point of the spine. Unless you cut yourself free using the 1014 call to Astraea, along with your Archangel Michael's sword, they, they may affix themselves to you like leeches, like bloodsuckers, and nest in your flesh for your lifetime. It's not a pretty picture. I pray that you may have your eyes opened, that you may see just what is burdening the bodies of the people and why they are so weak, without strength, without fire, and so diseased, because they let entities literally live off them and cling to them. You need the power of Elohim to exorcise entities. In reality, this lecture I'm giving to you is a beginning lecture in a course on the ritual of exorcism. And the next level, of course, has to do with practice, 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 working on the names of those entities, and then using the Ruby Ray ritual of exorcism that Sanat Kumara has given to us. Entities are tenacious and become vicious when threatened with an exorcist's knife or sword. Mighty Astraea says, there is no avatar, no son or daughter of God who has won his or her victory for, from this or any other planet who has not employed the mighty cosmic circle and sword of blue flame to accomplish it. In the hands of a true devotee of God, the circle and sword of blue flame is the power to cast out demons and to bind evil spirits. The circle and sword of blue flame is part and parcel of the empowerment of your Christhood. You have but to call to God in his name. What did Jesus tell us? I would like to see this written in a nice legible calligraphy and put in a frame in everyone's house. This is what he told us. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, 
and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, that your mighty I am presence may be glorified in your holy Christ self, and then glorified in your temple. This is the root of the understanding of the science of decreeing. Whatsoever ye ask in my name, I will do it. Our decrees are a perpetual asking and imploring God and commanding the light of God to solve the problems of the world. Jesus said, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. There is the promise. Use it every day. It will not fail. Astraea says, so when you call upon the name Jesus Christ for the binding of all elements of being that enslave your consciousness to bad habits and carnal mindedness, the legions of Astraea do answer and force with the legions of the Lord Christ. I come to tell you that that circle of blue-white lightning used together with my sword of blue flame is the specific antidote for every unrighteous element of the human consciousness and every unrighteous element out of death and hell on a planetary scale. Astraea says, try me, try me, try me, trust me. Jesus invoked the power of Astraea in his mission in Palestine. When the young man lay on the ground frothing at the mouth and the disciples were unable to cast out the demon from him, Jesus interceded by calling to Astraea, and instantly the demon left him and he was in his right mind. Astraea said, if my cosmic circle and sword of blue flame had been invoked around that boy by any one of the disciples, they would have beheld that demon leave on the instant. This was the power of light that Jesus had and that he invoked. And the Elohim, God, presence, make it very clear that God is no respecter of persons. Whether it's a disciple or the least of these, my brethren or the Lord himself, you make the call. The call compels the answer. Perhaps you don't hear or see the answer. You send out a call and the answer has to travel back through all kinds of layers of your own fear and human doubt and human consciousness. So it kind of gets slowed down like an arrow that hits something and can't get past it. So you have to keep on calling and keep on praying and keep on purifying yourself. This is, this is a path of a lifetime. This is not 15 minutes of Mass on Sunday. This is every day walking with God. You know they had to shorten the Mass because people wouldn't stand for it being longer? It's gotten shorter and shorter in this century until finally it's down to 15 minutes. Well, miracles can happen in 15 minutes, can't they? It doesn't take time to have miracles. Okay, Purity and Astraea say the circle of blue-white lightning takes many forms. Sometimes it's as steady as steel. It can be enlarged to the size of a giant hoop surrounding the entire planet, or a cord of light that can lasso a city. Its, whir its whirring sound can remind you of a buzzsaw peeling away at the debris in your aura. It draws discarnates and human garbage into a fiery vortex for transmutation. Whenever you find yourself in the midst of discord of any kind, call in the name of Jesus Christ to Elohim Purity and Astraea to lock the cosmic circle and sword of blue flame around the cause and core of it. Visualize in your mind's eye the action of a circle. See it as flashing diamond sapphire around everyone and everything. Visualize the sword of blue flame as a pulsating blue rod having the power of Aaron's rod and greater, bisecting the circle of blue flame. Use Grieg's concerto in A minor to meditate on the circle and sword of blue flame. I'll give you one more teaching, and that comes from Archangel Gabriel, who is also of the fourth ray. He gives this visualization for the action of the circle and sword of Astraea. As you clear each level of your being, Going from chakra to chakra, starting at the base of the spine, you actually visualize this circle whirling around your body. 
and Astraea takes from you layer upon layer of negative karma and misqualified energy. You start below the feet and you just see that whirling circle of blue flame going up and clearing every organ, every level of your being. And you can, while you are giving the 10, 14 calls to Astraea, whether you give them nine times or 24 or 40 times, the entire time, since you know the decree by heart, you have all that time for visualization. Your tongue has a momentum and it'll put itself in the right place while you go into deep meditation of visualizing the circle and sword going up and down. The sword is held parallel to the spine by Astraea once again, and this, the circle is going up and down. By the time you finish your Astraeas, you're clean as a whistle. Finally, I would conclude by saying El Moria has called this decree 1014, the most powerful mantra to the Divine Mother that has been released in this octave. And I believe it. Thank you. The only thing to do is do it. We're going to have our dictations now. We've had a break, so we'll clear the altar and prepare for beloved Archangel Michael and beloved Estrella. So this is going to take as long as it takes to remove this furniture. Let's sing to Estrella while it's happening. This is a wonderful march to Estrella. And you're welcome to march around the room. 353, make your fiats to Estrella. information on Elizabeth Clare Prophet's prophetic vision and spiritual solutions, 
Call 1-800-245-5445. The preceding program was presented by Summit University, Box 5000, Livingston, Montana, 59047-5000. If you'd like to know more, call this number or write this address. For a free book by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, or for more information about her teachings on the world's major religions, call 1-800-245-5445.